Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to have a video on the Murray Smokestacks. Last week's video was on the Murray Smelter, but we're going to give the Murray Smokestacks their own video. So, stay tuned! Murray Smokestacks. Last week we had a video on Murray Smelter. I show some great pictures of that smelter. Doing my research for the video, I found quite a few photos of the smokestack, so I thought it would be fun for the smokestack to have its own video. An exciting note, I was at a thrift store and found a picture framed with series of eight photos showing the stages as the smokestack was coming down. No clue who took the pictures, but what a neat find. We'll see them at the end. American Smelting and Refining Company, Asargo, will build the largest lead smelter in Murray in 1902. Early 1900s, Murray had the Highland Boy Smelter, that was a copper smelter, Asargo, that was the big lead smelter, Midville, just south of Murray, had two large smelters. There was little or no concern of what they were putting into the air. The smoke was damaging to the farmers' crops and stock. The farmers had enough. In 1904, they took the smelters to court. The smoke nuisance case. We had a video on the smoke farming and the 1906 litigation. You might want to check that out. November 5, 1906, ruling supported the farmers. Smelters had implement pollution controls. The Highland Boy smelter shut down and would move to Tooele. That would become the international smelter. Midvale's Bingham's Consolidated Smelter will close. Midvale's U.S. Smelter will add a lead smelter in 1905. They will implement pollution controls. Then they will stay in business until 1958. Under the agreement, Asargo was able to continue production with research on the effect of smelter smoke, experimental farms around the smelter, and a new 455-foot well, 465-foot smokestack was built as a result. Now, we have some great early construction pictures of them building the large smokestack. The first photo dated September 19, 1917. The next picture was dated October 19, 1917, so a month progress. It was says that the stack had the finest brickwork. November 29, 1917, looks like a cold day, but the work continues as the stack gets higher. December 29, 1917, the stack grows taller. The buildings at the base gives us an idea how big it's going to be. A snowy January day, it's the night, 1918. A good view of the smaller smokestack to the right. And then February 28, 1918, shows it's topped off. It was either 450 feet high or some say it was 465 feet high. Let's show this view of Mary again. It was taken in 1918. Now it was taken from the top of that tallest smokestack. I would love to see a picture taken from the same spot now. So much has changed over the years. I just love this picture. So let's look at some of the pictures I have of the smokestack. The Murray smokestacks will dominate the valley skyline for many years. Midvale's three smokestacks will come down 1960, leaving Murray's stacks to take over. Coming around the point of the mountain, looking north into the valley, you could always spot Murray's smokestacks. It was like a compass, an indicator where you were at. Well, back to these 1946 aerial views from Stephen Richardson, showing the smelters at work. They will only have a few more years, and then the smelter will be closed. The Murray smelter closed October 1950. The stacks will remain even after the smelter closed. It will be a landmark for another 50 years until August 6, 2000. They painted the Harmon Cafe logo on the large stack. 
what was probably appropriate since the first Harmon Cafe was built here in Utah, just up the street on 3890 South State Street. Pete Harmon was one of the first Kentucky Fried Chicken's franchisee. He helped Colonel Sanders build his recipe into a worldwide brand. In the mid-90s, Murray's Smelter site will be placed on EPA's Superfund list. Over the next few years, they will clean up the site. All that will remain is the two large smokestacks. August 6, 2000, the two large smokestacks will come down. The August 6th day was a Sunday. Now, this was to avoid the busy work week. An estimated 10,000 spectators watched at a safe distance. Water cannons placed around the site was to keep the dust down. Explosives were placed in the base to make the stacks implode. Now, these are the pictures I found at Savers or the thrift store. The photos were taken from Murray High School. You can see the school sign, the tennis court. Note all the people around. You can see the amount of water they are spraying on the site for the dust control also. They will build the Intermountain Medical Center here at the old Murray Smelters location. Groundbreaking was September 2003. It will open October 2006. We call it the mothership. At the south end of the campus is the footprint of that large smokestack. It shows the size and thickness of the stack at the base. So that's Murray's smokestacks.